Hey there everyone, Hatesh here, back again with another video and welcome to this unique series. This is a series about front-end interviews, specially focused on JavaScript. Recently what happened is one of our students went for an interview. Interviews, being a JavaScript interview, the common questions were asked like what is a lexical scope, what is a closure and all such thing. Now in this interview, one of our students did not so good while explaining what is a closure. He knew what is a closure but the way of how he can explain the closure was not so good and that's why he failed in the interview. So this made me realize that can I create an entire series in which I make sure that I explain you how the interview goes with the JavaScript and how can I make sure that you are able to explain these concepts nicely to the interview. So welcome officially to a random series in which randomly I'll be throwing around videos about JavaScript interview series, how you can nail down these interviews. Today we're gonna get started with the topic of what is the closure. Now this is not about just getting through that explaining what is a closure. It's all about how can you explain closure in such a way that interviewer understand that you have a practical exposure about closure as well as you truly understand it. Let me walk you through what I mean by that. So this is a closure. I'm pretty sure you might have studied this definition directly from the MDN docs, which says a closure is, let me zoom this, a closure is a combination of function bundled together with reference to its surrounding state not getting it even a tiny bit. In other words, closure gives you access to an outer function scope. And then there is a nice example as well. Okay, now this is where things get a little bit complex. A lot of people understand what is a closure with this example, but this example doesn't make sense. So let me just copy this first and try to modify this example. I have a simple HTML file, I'll just get that. I will also go ahead and simply have a simple h1 and I'll just say closure. Save it, right click and open a live server. And hopefully I'll save some uh, eyes as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, hey, I want to bump up a style and let's just grab a body if I can. And we'll say simply background color will be my favorite one, 414141. So yep, this saves a lot of eyes. And now let's go ahead and work with that. So this is my script. So I'll just write my JavaScript plainly up here. This is what it was given to me in the example. And let me try to modify this example so that you understand it nicely. Let me first go view, word wrap, looks nice. And we're gonna go ahead and remove this. Don't need this. And also don't need this. And yep, of course don't need this. So what this is saying, this basic classic example of MDN docs is, let's just say I have an init method and I declare a variable inside this method. And this is an inner method. And when I try to log in the name, the inner method has the access to this outer method. And this is your closure. Technically, this is 100% true, but this is never going to impress any interviewer that, hey, in the closure, the inner function gets access to the outside variable. Like, what's the need of it? Why is it there? That's when you explain interviewer that why closures are so much important and how they make your life a lot easier. Let me show you that. This is not going to cut through. This is almost like calling this one as, let's just say we call this one as outer. So we go ahead and call this one as inner because this function is also going to be changed as inner. So this is my inner or let's just call this as inner one function. So this has an access. And if I go ahead and try to duplicate this and let's go ahead and call this one as inner two. And I go ahead and call this one up here, so inner2. So there is nothing, absolutely nothing magical about these functions. You just call this up here. Now, technically, you can explain this like, hey, there is a name var name here. And this function has access to this name. This function also has access to this name. We are also calling these functions. So it will work. Outer is going to print this name twice. Now, this could be modified in such a way that instead of passing on a name just here, what you could do, have done is just remove it and pass it on a name here. Yep. Now it has access to this name in all these functions. So what's important here is to explain that this variable was passed on to the outer function, but still the inner functions are able to keep a track of it. But that's it. That's all you can explain right now. Make sure you don't explain too much about lexical scoping and all of that because the question is about to expo explain the exposure, the closure here. So the better example would be when you try to explain it like this. Let's just say we have a button with an ID of orange. So I have this button with an ID orange. Let's call this one as orange if I can. And we'll also have another button which will have an ID of green. And this will be a green button. Now let's take a simple challenge. We are gonna just remove this. We don't need this tiny bit. So let's just remove this, don't need this. Now the challenge is really simple in front of us that if I click on this orange button, 
the background color of the screen or the web page should turn into orange. Same for green. So what happens? Does this work right now? Definitely not. If I click on that, it doesn't work. The usual approach is really, really simple. In case somebody gives me, I would just simply go up and just write a simple code. Hey, let's first grab it. Document.getElementById. The ID is orange. And once I grab this element, then I would run a simple on click onto this one. So I'll just say, hey, I would run an event on click. And this on click requires a function. Now, this is where you explain closure. Now, take a moment closely here. This is an on click method or on clicked event handler. These event handler requires that you should always pass on a function to it, nothing else. So the requirement is that on click requires a function, hence I'm passing on a function here. There we go, we pass on a function, no big deal. Now in this, I further grab a document. I say document, let's grab a simple attribute of it, which is a body. And then I say, hey, I want to append a style, the very famous one, background color. And I just go ahead and say, hey, I want to change the color to, let's just say, orange. So this is a classic functionality. There is no big deal in this. Everybody does it exactly like same. If I go back up here, click on orange. Now, yep, the browser turns into orange or the web page turns into orange. If I have to do it for the green, obviously, I'll just come up here and we'll say, hey, let's go ahead and change it to from orange to green. Now it's looking for an ID green and it's changing the color to green. Okay, job done. Well done. We have done and we are now playing with the colors. But this approach is not good. Right now we have two buttons. Maybe in a real world case, we have 200 buttons. So this is not good. You might want to create a separate function which actually does the same thing. So instead of doing this, you go ahead and say, hey, I'll create a simple function which will be uh, simply like click handler or whatever you want to name it further. Handler. And what this click handler will be, it's a simple function. So there we go, just goes like that. Now, what I really want to do into this uh, simple click handler is just write this piece of code. Copy that and paste it up here. Now, instead of passing on green, let's just say somebody gives us this color and we just exactly put this variable. So there we go. And we simply go ahead and say color. Okay, all right. Now, in theory, this function will work absolutely fine. There is no problem at all. But there is a little bit of a problem with this. Now, how do I execute or run this function? That's where the problem comes in. And that's where the concept of closure comes in. So when you say document.getElementById and I grab the element with the name of orange, now I have a problem. I have to run this on click. So I go ahead and say dot on click. On click. Now the problem is here, very straightforward problem that this on click requires a function to be passed on. So yes, I can go ahead and pass on a reference of the function just like this. But the, another problem is that I cannot actually pass on an argument in this method. Yes, the requirement is that the passing thing should be function. But yes, this at this point, this is exactly going to work as expected. But the moment you actually execute this, that means now the value that I'm passing on into this on click is whatever this function returns after the execution. That is the important part. So the execution happened and this is passing nothing. This is returning nothing. So at this point, the return value is undefined and that is why this is not going to work. So if I go back and obviously even if I pass on an element, let's just say I go ahead and pass on orange to this one. I go back, uh, I hit a reload up here. So this was previously orange, but it has already executed. It is, it is not working. If I go ahead and say, hey, let's just, for time being, let's just go ahead and change this to something like uh, green. I go back onto this one. This has already executed. This is not executing on my click. The method has already run. That is what the on-click problem is. How can we resolve this problem? Remember, on-click requires you to pass on a function and you're passing on a click handler. The easiest way to handle this situation is just cut this out and make sure you create another function and return that. Yep, that's what it, this is. Return, simply go ahead and create a simple function. There you go, just like this. And we simply go and work like this. Now, the thing is, interesting is, in the previous example on the MDN docs, we were not able to understand that what's the point when this inner function has the access of this outer world? Hey, it doesn't make sense. But now it is making sense here because this function when I'm referencing to color has an access to this outside color. Remember when I told you this name could be passed on a parameter? Yes, exactly, now this could be done. Now, 
this is not already executing immediately. It will wait for my command and then it will execute. I go back up here onto the document. Notice here, it has not already executed. When I click on it, then it works. The reason being, the closure is there. Closure is the ability in the JavaScript where the inner function has an access to all the variables that are available for the outer function. And this is a real world example, a real case scenario which happens throughout in React. If you have worked with that, this happens almost every place in React. It is full of closures every single place. And similarly, I can go ahead and add an element. Let's just say this time I want to grab green and I'll say, hey, green, this one needs to change as orange. So really simple example. I go back up here. Orange works, green works. Really great. Now the definition will make a lot more sense to you. Let me go ahead. So in other words, a closure gives you access to an outer function scope from an inner function. In JavaScript, closures are created every time a function is created. So all of these functions has this ability to create an object, which is a closure. So, you know, JavaScript, everything is an object. So every time you create a function uh, in the proto, if you look forward a little bit in the detail, you'll find this closure. And this closure is nothing. It's just the ability to map out all the values that you are passing inside this function all the function inside it has an access. And this is how you explain interviewer. If you explain it in this depth with a code example, you're gonna nail down the interview. If you want me to make more such video about the common interview questions like closures and higher order functions and whatnot, with such example that you can explain to interviewer, let me know in the comment section. I would be super happy to do this. And also make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'll catch you up in the next one.